huge prop to Elise because obviously she made this play cool. Yes, Elise. A word about process, um, and for all of you, I'll try and fill you in on what's going on. Uh, there are a lot of people playing a lot of different characters and playing the same characters, and it's very difficult to figure out what's going on sometimes. So I'm going to narrate for you. Romeo, so you know, is wearing a red jacket and a blue hat. You'll see him every time. Juliet is usually the person that's in the front of the stage. So <laughs> you can figure it out. I'll help you. Um, these guys started working on the lines about oh, three weeks ago. Three and a half weeks ago, we decided, I was, after everything we'd gone through, Let's, uh, you know, let's do something else. Let's do a writing unit or something else a little bit easier. They didn't want to. They wanted to do the play. This is a ninth grade tradition. This will be the 10th year in a row of me doing this play with uh, Dory, a full uh, Shakespearean production. And uh, so that was really cool. The second thing is that they really wanted to do something together as a collaboration. And that's what they've done. They've been stepping up. Isaac and Casey are doing the lights. Everybody's been working, Sadie's been working tirelessly with Lauren to memorize 85 lines of Shakespearean language. Um, Raina is not here today, so we've got Chloe stepping into this position yesterday, learning lines since yesterday. Uh, and Quinn and Nico also stepped in for Josie, who's unfortunately sick. So if you see a script or two, that's because they've just gotten those parts literally yesterday. So without further ado, Enjoy the show. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From far to fatal loins of these two foes. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventure hideous overthrows, and doth with their death bury their parents' strife. Their fearful passage of their death marked love, and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, is now the one hour traffic of our stage. To which, if you with patient ears attend, here shall miss our toil shall strive to mend. <laughs> My word will not carry clothes. No, for then we should be colliers. I mean, and we being collar would draw. Aye, while well, you live, draw your neck out of the collar. I strike quickly being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moved me. To move is to stir and to bound and to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. Draw thy tool, here comes to the house of the Montague. My naked weapon is out. If you quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run? Fear me not. No, Mary, I fear thee. Let us take the law of our side. Let them begin. I will find as I pass by and let them take it as they live. Nay, as they dare. I will bite my thumb at them, which is a, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. Did you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Did you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law of our side if I say I? No. No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. See better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Yes, better, sir. You lie. Draw off, you be men. Gregory, remember that swashing blow. Hark, fools, put up your swords. You know not what you do. What art thou doing amongst these heartless hinds? Hear <laughs> <laughs> thee, Vittorio, look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage to part these men with me. What? Drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word. As I hate hell, all Montagues and thee. I'm at thee, coward. Oh, 
funny he was coming for us if he played in spite of me. Thou villain Capulet, hold me not, let me go. Stop, not your foot. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbor's stained steel, will they not hear what holy men, you beasts, that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins? On pain of torture from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, read of an airy word, by thee, O Capulet, and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. For ever you disturb our streets again, your life shall be the forfeit of the thief. For this time, all the rest will part away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon to know our further pleasure in this case. To old free town, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Oh, where is Romeo? Saw you him today? Reclane, and he was not at his prey. Many a morning has hath his he been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs. Black and portentous must his humor prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor can learn of it. See where he comes, so please you, step aside. I'll know his grievance, or much be denied. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But noon struck nine. I mean, sad hours seem wrong. Is that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes him short. In love? Out. It, of love? Out of her favor. Why in love? Alas, that love, so gentle in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough and true. Tell me in sadness, who is that you love? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aimed so near when I supposed you love. A right good mark, and she's fair I love. Oh, right, fair mark, fair cousin, as soon as hit. Well, in that hit you miss, for she'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow, she hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity, well armed from love's weak, childish bow, she lives unharmed. Then she hath sworn that she will still live chaste? She hath, and that sparing makes huge waste, for beauty starved with her severity, cuts beauty off from all posterity. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how not to think. By giving liberty to undo thine eyes, examine other beauties. He that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost. Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. I will pay that doctrine, or else die in death. So, um, as you can see, the House of Montague and the House of Capulet are in a battle. Romeo is Montague, Juliet is Capulet, but Romeo is in love with somebody else, not Ro uh, Juliet right now. He's in love with a girl named Rosaline. On, in Juliet's household, Paris, a local count, is looking to marry Juliet. Her father does not want to marry her off, but her mom is interested in the proposition. Montague is bound as well as I in penalty alike, and tis not hard, I think, for men as old as we to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both. Pity tis of the odds so long, but now, my lord, what says my suit? But saying o'er what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? It's an honor I dream not of. An honor? Were not I thine only nurse, I would say thou hadst such wisdom from thy teeth. She hath not seen the change in fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her right to be a bride. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my account, I was your mother well upon these years that you are now married. 
younger than she are happy mother's maid. And too soon martyr though so early made. The earth has swallowed all my hopes and she. She is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. I'll look to my... Uh, a man, young lady, lady such a man as all the world. Why, he's a man of wax. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nay, he's a flower in faith, a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This, this night, night we hold in all the custom feasts, where to have invited many a guest such, such as we love, love, and you among the store. One more, most welcome, makes our number more. Among fresh female buds shall you this night inherit in my house, hear all, all see, and like her most, whose merit shall be. I'll look to like if looking like you moves, but no more deep will thou in dark thine eye than your consent gives me strength to make it fly. Juliet, the county stayed. Go, girl. So happy nights to happy days. And now it's the party scene. Uh, Romeo is going to see Juliet for the first time, and he's going to say, Rosaline, who? Gentlemen and ladies that have their toes, unflavored corns will have a bout with you. Aha, my mistresses, which of you all would now deny to dance? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I'm born a visor and can tell a whispering tale and a fair lady ear, and such would please. Ah, tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall, give room and foot it, girls. Touching hers made blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? Her swear at sight, for I ne'er have seen beauty till this night. <laughs> this by his voice to be Montague. Fetch me in my rapier, boy. What dares the slave come hither covered with an antic face to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it on a stand. Why, how now, kinsmen? Wherefore storm you so? Um, the Montague, our foe, a villain that has hither come in spite to clear and scorn our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. Consent thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears like a portly gentleman, and to say the truth, Verona brags of him, to be a virtuous and well governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all the town here in my house doing disparagement. Therefore, let him alone. Be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, the which if thou respect. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. What, good man, boy? I say he shall go, go to. Am I the master here, or are you? Go to. You are a saucy boy, isn't it so indeed? <laughs> Patience before us with willful caller meeting makes my flesh tremble in their greeting. I will withdraw this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitter gal. <laughs> I profane with my unworthiest hand, this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch which a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows this. For saints have hands that pilgrims do touch, but palm to palm with holy palm is kissed. 
You have not seen proof that holy promise too? I, pilgrim, would say they must do some prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let the good hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest fate turn to despair. Fate do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayers infect thy take. Thus from my lips by yours my sin is purged. Then have my lips to sin as I have took. Sin from my lips? Oh, trespass sweetly urge. Give me my sin again. Because by the book. Madam, your mother prays a word with you. What is her mother? Mary Baxter, her mother is the lady of the house, a good lady, wise and virtuous. I nurse your daughter who talks with all, and he and I tell you, she that way holds her shall have all the truth. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear cow, my life and my foe is dead. Away, be gone. This fort is at the best. I so I fear the more of my own rest. Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet, swords. Is it even so? Why then? I thank you. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Let's to bed. What's he that follows her that would not dance? I know not. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo, and a monogy, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. Now we come to the probably the most famous scene in the whole play, the balcony scene. Romeo and Juliet fell in love before they knew each other ident each other's identities. So Romeo is now after the party sneaking into the Capulet Garden, and she is above, not knowing that he's there. Moon, for she is already sick and pale with grief that thou her maid art far more fair than she. Be not her maid since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and only fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet says nothing. What of that? For I discourse it. I will answer it. I am too bold. It is not to me she speaks. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a captain. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak of this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, but not a Montague. What's Montague? Nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What then a name? That which we call a rose with any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word, call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth I never will be Romeo. For men are thou to be screened in night, so stumblest on my counsel. By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. My ears have not yet heard the hundred words of thy tongue's utterance, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither fair saints, if either be slight. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard will be high and hard to climb, and the place of death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's like wings that I overperch these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out. Therefore thy kinsmen are no threat to me. If they do see thee, they'll murder thee. <laughs> Alack, there lies more pale in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, not in proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have nice cloak to hide me from their sight. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life better ended by their hate than death's prorogued wanting of thy love. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would maiden's love became my cheek. For which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain would I dwell for him, fain, fain deny. 
What I spoke, but farewell compliments. In truth, Sir Montague, I am too fond, and therefore am amazed to think my heavier light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess. But that thou overheard its arrows wear, my true love's passion, and therefore pardon me. Not in few this yielding to light love, its dark night hath so discovered. Air, once sailing. I have no joy in this contract tonight. It is too rash, too advised, too sudden, too like the wedding which doth cease to be. Air, once to say it lightly. Sweet good night. Good night, good night, with sweet reposing rest. Come to my heart without submission. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What thou fashion can thou have to The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are in thee. Julia! I hear to know it's in. Do love a do and not give nurse. Do money to be true. Stay but a little, I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night, I am afeard that being a knight, this is all but a dream. Too flattering, sweet to be substantial. Dear Romeo, good night indeed. If that thy bent of love, and thy purpose are a wolf, and thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow. By one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time wilt thou perform the right? And on my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. So thrive my soul. A thousand times good night. How silver sweet some lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ear. Good night, good night. Sorry, if that sweet sound. So we should say good night to the Dwell upon thine eye, peace in thy breast, that I will sleep in peace, so sweet to rest. After their long and drawn out courtship, the next day they decide to get married. this holy act that after hours with sorrow chide us not. These violent delights have violent ends and in their triumph die, like fire and powder which as they kiss consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in its own deliciousness, and the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore, love moderately, long love doth so, to swift arrives as tardy as too slow. Ah, oh, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heft like mine, and let thy skill be more to blaze on it, and sweeten with thy breath the tender air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive and be <coughs> there by this feeling conquer. And see, more rich in matter than conceit. Rags of substance, not of ornament. Ra uh, they are. They are but beggars that can count their words, but my true love has grown to such excess that I cannot sum up so much half my wealth. Come, come with me, and we will make short work. For by your leave, you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporates two in one. <laughs> <laughs> That same day, Benvolio and his buddy Mercutio, Romeo's friends, are hanging out in the streets and they come across Tybalt, who of course has just been called the saucy boy by his uncle, and is <laughs> mad. He's a hater in general, but now he has a reason to hate Romeo. Romeo unknowingly comes upon them to tell them the good news. Hey, we're cousins now. Then we shall not escape a brawl, for now these hot days of the mad blood stirring. By my head, here comes a Capulet. By my tail, I care not. Gentlemen, good den, a word with one of you. And by one word with one of us, couple it with something. Make it a word with a blow. You shall find me apt enough to do so, sir, and you will give me the occasion. Did 
not take some occasion without giving? Marticia, thou consort. Romeo, consort. What? Thou that make the minstrels, thou consort. We hop here in the public haunt of men, either withdrawn to some private place and reason coldly of their grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look, and let them gaze. And will that pledge for no man pledge your eyes? Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes our man, Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford. No better terms than this. Thou art a villain. Tibble, the reason I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villamite, <laughs> I am none. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. Or you shall not excuse the enemy that thou hast done to me, therefore turn and draw. I do protest. I never injured thee, but love thee more than thou canst devise. And so thou shalt know the reason of my love, and so good Capulet, whose name I tender as dearly as my own, be satisfied. O oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission, tibble, you rat catcher, will you walk? What wouldst thou have of me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives. I'm for you. Gentlemen, for shame, <coughs> forbear this outrage. The prince expressly hath forbidden bandying in Verona's streets. Hold tibble, good Mercutio. This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, but an hour hath been my kinsman. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio is dead. That gallant spear hath aspired the clouds, which too untimely here his form here. This day's black fate more days doth depend. This but begins the woe. Others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Alive and triumph, Mercutio slain. Respective lenity, away to heaven. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's souls, but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou, or I, or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy, who sort with Romeo, shout with him hence. This shall determine that. Ah. <laughs> Romeo, away, be gone, the citizens are up and Tybalt slain. Stand and not amazed, the prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Oh, I fortune fool! <laughs> Where are the vile beginners of this fray? Oh, noble prince, I can discover all, the unlucky manage of this fate over all. There lies the man, slain by young Romeo, that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Oh, Tybalt, my cousin, oh, my brother's child, I beg for justice which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt, Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him, he slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Not Romeo, prince, he is Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes by what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him hence, that Romeo hints in haste, else when he's found, that hour is his last. Bear hence this body and attend our will. Mercy but murder, pardoning those that kill. All right. So, Romeo. 
Daniel has been exiled for killing Tybalt. Tybalt's dead, obviously, for killing Mercutio. And Capulet wants to make things all better because Juliet has been weeping inconsolably for days. So, as parents like to do, and often do wrong, makes her happy by Mayor deciding to marry her off to Paris. We found a happy new guy for you, honey. <laughs> Things have fallen out, sir. So unluckily. There's been no time to move our daughter. But look, you, she loved the kingdom Tibble dearly, and so did I. Well, we were born to die. She's very late, and she'll not come down tonight. But I promise you, before your company, I would have been a bed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Madam, good night. Come in with your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she is mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay, more. I doubt it not. Wife, go to her ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here my son Paris's love, and bid her. Mark you me, on Wednesday next. But soft. What day is it? Monday, my lord. Monday? Well, Wednesday is too soon. But Thursday, let it be. But Thursday, tell her. She shall be married to this noble earl, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I will that Thursday be tomorrow. Well, get you gone, or Thursday be it then. Go to, go to Juliet ere you go to bed. Prepare her wife against this wedding day. For well, my lord, light to my chamber. Ho! Afford me. It is so very, 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 very late that we may call it early by and by. Good night. Romeo and Juliet have spent their last night together, and Juliet then refuses hearing more of the news, or hears the news that she's going to marry uh, Paris, gets mad, and then her dad gets madder. Why, how now, Juliet? 
Mom, I'm not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death? What? Wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? Yet let me weep for such a feeling of loss. But now I tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And good tidings, what news is this? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child, one who, to put thee from thy heaviness, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor I look not for. And happy tidings, what day is this? Well, uh, marry my child, early next Thursday morn. The gallant, young and noble gentleman, the county Paris, at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. By St. Peter's Church and Peter's soon he shall not make me a joyful bride. These are news indeed. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself and see how he will take it at your hands. When the sun sets near the drizzle dew, the sunset of my brother's son flows down the street. How now, wife? Have you delivered her our decree? I, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you, take me with you, wife. How will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not count her blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have brought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. For proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful for hate that is meant in love. Uh, how now, how now, chop logic? What is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud? Mistress Minion. Thank me no thinkings, nor proud me no proud. But fellow your fine joints against Thursday next. To go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle there. Fie, fie, what? Are you mad? Good father, I can see to my knees. Have patience yet to speak a word. Hang the young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell thee what. Get thee to church on Thursday, or never after look at me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. God, I think it. God in heaven bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to write her so. Oh, and why, my lady wisdom, hold your tongue! You are too hot! <laughs> God, bread makes me mad. Thursday is near. Lay hand on heart of thighs. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not. Hang, beg. Start, die in the streets, for by my soul I will ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall ever do thee good. Trust to it, I thank you. I'll not be persuaded. Is there no, is there no pity sitting in the clouds that sees into the bottom of my grief? Good mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week. Or if thou dost not, make thy bridal bed in the dim monument where Tybalt lies. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. Juliet comes to Friar Lawrence, desperate to get out of the situation. Friar Lawrence happens to be talking to Paris about the arrangements for the marriage. Um, and Juliet and Friar Lawrence hatch a plan. Juliet is going to take a potion that makes it look as if she's dead. Thursday, sir? The time is very short. My father, Captain Little, have it so, and I am nothing slow to slap his hate. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course. I like it not. I would I do not why it should be slow. Uh, look, sir, here comes the lady towards myself. Happily met, my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, what I may be what. That may be must be, love, on Thursday night. What must be shall be, help a certain text. Are you at leisure, holy mother, now, or shall I come to you at evening next? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter. Now, my lord, we must improve the time along. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early I will rouse thee. Until then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Oh, shut the door, and when thou hast done so, come weep with me, past hope, past fear, past help. Oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wit. I hear thou must, in nothing may prorogue it, on Thursday next, be married to this county. 
Tell me not why I let thou hurt to this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise. And with this knife I'll help it presently. Be not so long to speak, I long to die. If what thou speakest, speak not of remedy. Old daughter, I do spy a kind of hope, which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent. If, rather than to marry Connie Perrin, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to try to be able to shake. Thy copious with death himself escape from it, and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Rather than Mary Paris, come off the battlements of yonder tower, or walk in thievish ways, or bid me lurk where serpents are, and I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Hold then, go home, be merry, give consent to Mary Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou the style, being then in bed, in distilled liquor. Drink thou off. Then presently, through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor. For no cold shall keep the state of progress but for sleep. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou living. The roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to paly ashes, but eyes in those fall like death when it shuts up the day of life. Each part, deprived of supple government, shall be stiff and stark and cold. Appear like death, and in this borrowed likeness of trunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awaken from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. Then, as the manner of our country is in thy best robes uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be born to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, it gets thou shalt awake. Shall Romeo by my, by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking, and that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua. And this shall free thee from this present chain, if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valor in the accident. Oh, give me, give me, tell me not of fear. <laughs> Now Juliet takes the vial. I should have added that Ro uh, Friar Lawrence and Romeo are going to come to the tomb and wake her up and take her to Mantua to escape all of it. What? Are you busy, Ho? Need you my help? No, madam, we have called such necessaries as are behold for our state tomorrow. So please you, let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you. For I am sure you have your hands full on this so sudden business. Good night, get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. Farewell, God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! Nurse! What should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. Romeo is in Mantua, and as fate has it, unfortunately, his friend Balthazar sees the, the uh, procession to the funeral and comes to tell Romeo about it and has no word from the friar. If I may trust the flattering trees of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead, and breathed such life with kisses in my lips that I revived, 
and was an emperor. Ah me, how sweet is love itself possessed, when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Verona, how now, Baldazar? Doth thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fair is my Juliet, that I ask again? For nothing can be ill, if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sits in Capo's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low and pitifully took post to tell you. Oh, pardon me for bringing this ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging. Get me ink and paper, and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. Oh, I do beseech you, sir, have patience, for your looks are pale and wild, and do import some misadventure. Hush, thou art deceived. Leave me, and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter. Get thee gone. <laughs> and I. <laughs> I <laughs> I will be with these dreams. <laughs> well, Juliet. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief. Thou art swift of entering the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary. Apothecary? Who we'll calls so loud? Come hither, man. Let me have a germ of poison. Such soon. <laughs> That will persuade itself through the veins that the life we retake her may And that the charm will may be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powdered fire doth hurry from fatal hands. <laughs> Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich. So be not poor, but break it, and take this. My poverty, but not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty, and not thy will. Put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. If you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy goal, worse poison to men's soul, doing more murders in this lonesome world than these poor compounds thou mayest not sell. Friar Lawrence waiting in his cell to go rescue Juliet. Here's news from Friar John that the, lever, that the letter never actually arrived in Mantua and now has to go to the tomb to find Juliet. Would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who brought my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again. Unhappy fortune! By my brotherhood, this letter was not nice, but full of charge of your import, and the neglecting it made too much danger. Now must I to the monument alone within three hours will fair Juliet wake. She'll assure me much that Romeo hath had no notice of these accidents. But I'll write again to Mantua, and keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corpse, closed in a dead man's tomb.
the final scene of the play, Juliet in the tomb and Romeo arrives, takes his poison, and they miss each other by a second. Men are at the point of death have they been married? Is their keepers called a lightning before death? Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife, death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered. Beauty's design is a crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks. The death's pale flag is not advanced today. My dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe the unsubstantial death keeps thee here in, in darkness to be his paramour? Fear of that, I will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids, and here will I set up my everlasting rest and take the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world weary flesh. Eyes, look your last. Arms, take your last embrace, and lips, O oh, you, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide, thou desperate pilot, now I once run upon the rocks, thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to my love. Oh, true about the gate. Thy drugs are quick. Is that the kiss? I got it. Well, tear, a cup flows in my true love's hand. Poison I see it in his timeless end. Oh, churl, drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. I will touch their lips. Happily, some poison yet doth hang on them to make thy with a restorative. Thy lips are warm. Lead, boy, which way? Be I annoy? Then I'll be brief. O oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rust, then let me die. Where be these enemies, Capulet? Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, and that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love, and I, winking at your discourse too, have lost a brazen kinsman. All are punished. Oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no one can do it. But I can give thee more, for I will raise a statue of pure gold. That law Verona by the name is known. There shall no figure at such rate be set as that in true and faithful Juliet. As rich as Romeo, this part is lady's life. Or sacrifices of Romeo, too. The blooming peace this morning was a dream of the sun. For so, I will not show this thing. Go hence, have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some punished. For never was there a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Thank <laughs> you.